is the Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. Rebuilding America together. Now, here's Jeff. 33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. We're here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time. Today, of course, uh, we're here uh, for this uh, final half hour. Then we'll replay uh, this hour with Melissa and uh, MTC. Uh, and then get ready for uh, three hours tonight at uh, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern Time uh, as we debut live uh, in Madison on 92.7 FM. But we're excited, though, um, about uh, having a lot of our contributors coming up over the next uh, few weeks uh, to be part of the uh, nighttime Madison uh Station, and um, I think I'm going to make the offer right now uh, to the Renaissance man. You catch him on Democracy Watch News, catch him right here every Tuesday on the Jeff Santos Show. And Mark, I would love to have you on nighttime, uh, you know, a late night with uh, MTC. Well, even though it'll be early in the West Coast. Uh, well, so there's night your night invitation. That would fit my schedule perfectly since I am usually up all night, so no problem with the night owl stuff. That's my normal schedule. I'm sorry, we're, we got some music playing on the boat right now. We're actually at the marina trying to get out, but the oh, you wind are. is really heavy today. Yeah, the wind, like right now it's really nice, but every once in a while a huge gust comes up. The Seattle weather is so unpredictable. I'm telling anybody who comes here, just especially in the fall and the spring, look, the weather changes every five minutes. It'll rain on you, then it'll be perfectly sunny and 75 degrees, then it'll get really nasty and windy and terrible for a while, and then the sun will come out again just before sunset, it'll be beautiful, and people will be kicked back, you know, having a, a margarita at the boathouse or something. But right now, we've got these um, gusts of wind that come up, and literally, like, my friend had an inflatable raft, and it blew the raft right out of her hands. Of course, we're a little bit late because my buddy over here who was trying to get a <laughs> he was trying to get a Russell Wilson jersey, and he was just obsessed. He was like, "No, I'm not leaving today until I get my jersey." So I guess he finally well, we'll got get it into from- the Seahawks later. They're undefeated and and playing some great football. I watched a little bit of the other night uh, against the Vikings. Uh, so uh, although the Vikings aren't that great of a team, so sorry Minnesota. Um, but uh, the the fact is is that uh, you know you guys are uh, making a uh, road. You and Green Bay will have to get you a, uh, a little uh, debate going with Harvey K and company uh, because that may be the uh, finals uh, coming up uh, for the Super Bowl in the NFC. Uh, that was let me a ask crazy you, game. I know, the I know of that game. It was on pretty amazing was, stuff. You guys are doing great stuff. And, yeah. We'll get Even to Russell that. Wilson's jaw was dropping. Exactly, exactly. We'll get to that a little later, Mark. But I want to. I want to ask okay. you. Uh, you mentioned that um, people are going to have uh, a margarita. I mean, are people hanging out outdoors, or is uh, there some indoor stuff going on too? What is the latest in Seattle in terms of, you know, inside, outside, okay. people gathering together? This is Mark Taylor Canfer reporting from downtown Seattle, where uh, <laughs> Andrew Lewis, our city council member. Uh, at a meeting just the other day that I participated in, told us, guess what? Uh, those businesses, the major businesses that said that they were going to open in June but didn't, uh, are now saying that they're going to open in January but probably won't. So we, I think, this is my thought, uh, is that uh, not only the city council but the governor, of course, are not interested in a second wave. So That's smart. Uh, things are slow. Yeah. So, but you can... Go. Of course, people are out doing a lot of uh, outdoor sports because that's Seattle anyway, as we talked about once before. But, you know, I especially am such an aquatic sport kind of guy, so I'm out on the water almost every day when it's even slightly sunny, even sometimes when it's not, just because it's nice to get away from the city and the, the water is very calming to me. Of course, it can be, as I've said before, a very tempestuous mistress, too, when the wind comes up, like it has a couple times this afternoon. But So you have to watch it, too, and be careful. So are you going on, are are you on a boat with, you know, a hundred other people, you know, wall to wall, or is it like 10 people and you're all separated? Well, well, and you know, like Juliana and I had planned to get, you know, the only time, like today we're using paddle boards and kayaks. And so we're separate, but we're together, if you know what I mean. So we're out on the water together, but we're not on the same boat. And that's normally how we do it. But there's also a bigger boat that I have, and that can fit several people besides myself. So then, you know, uh, you know, people tend to wear their masks, even on the even on the boat with me. That's just my friends. We tend to all wear masks. But there are some 
outdoor places, like I mentioned before, the White Swan, uh, right on the waterfront in Seattle, which I love to go to, our local public house, uh, which has, you know, great people working there, very, very much the alternative crowd in Seattle. You know, they all have nose piercings and tattoos and have bands, you know. I love that place. People who are boat people have a lot of fun there. Uh, boat people tend to, I notice, enjoy life a little bit, and they like to have a drink now and then. So people sit out at the boathouse and watch the sunset, and then everybody kind of skedaddles because it does get, you know, chilly after sunset in Seattle this time of year. People get out on the water. They get outdoors. Uh, I just bought an electric bike. People get out, and they do outdoorsy things as much as possible, and that kind of keeps us all seen. Now, there are some – there are the outdoor seating venues, which I go to. Um, I still, still though, there are very loose rules in some of these areas. So they'll give you an, like they'll serve you outdoors at a stand, right? And they'll give you your beer or your drink in a cup. And then you're pretty much welcome to wander around, you know, it's sort of more European style where the businesses around there allow you to drink on their property because they're not open at, you know, after five o'clock anyway. And they just made an agreement with the local pub that, you know, it's okay if people sit on our benches out in front of our businesses or whatever and have their beer. So, and then, of course, people, sometimes they get it and go out on the boats, which is a famous thing to do. Every Tuesday in Seattle, there's the famous duck dodge because there are so many ducks and Canadian geese in Seattle. They're everywhere. I, I mean, they just uh, waddle right up to my you know, boat and get in with me sometimes, so you have to chase them out. <laughs> they're very friendly. They let you get right up to next to their goslings. The geese do now, and you know they're not even that protective. They just got to watch you very close. They don't like dogs, of course, because the dogs are their, are, are their predator to them. But other than that, you know, people get out. Now, there are some indoor places, and some of them are very big, like, warehouse kind of spaces that have huge ceilings and lots of space. There's a brew pub up on Capitol Hill uh, that's like that, which has really high ceilings. And it also has an outdoor area. There's the Republic, which is also near Lake Union, which has outdoor seating. And it's covered. And, you know, as the weather changes, what they'll have is heaters. So there'll be outdoor seating with heating. So it just depends on the business, Jeff. Some have stayed open, some are doing really well, and some have totally closed and gone out of business. So it's very inconsistent. But in general, you have to kind of find a place and then, you know, find your own social distancing when you do it. Talking to Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. Uh, so um, we have uh, seen a lot of your, your Twitter action, of course, and, and, and really some great heroic reporting, um, you know, in, uh, in your neighborhood in Capitol Hill and, and others. Um, what is the latest? Uh, what is Ms. Sawant uh, saying? And, um, you know, the city council, the back and forth with the mayor, Ms. Durkin. Um, where are you with all of that stuff? Is there any resolution, any more reforms going on? Yes, well, Andrew Lewis also made it very clear at the meeting the other day that uh, uh, he is very interested in reforming the police. He's not interested in, in eliminating the police, but he does want to reimagine and re-envision a police department which serves the community. And that means um, getting them out of dealing with addiction issues and mental illness and getting uh, other members of the community who are professionals involved in that. He, uh, The city council plans – oh, by the way, the city council was able to over – turn the mayor jenny durkin's veto of a three hmm. percent cut in the city budget she wasn't even gonna go for a three percent budget cut so she's pretty much you know standing by the police department in, in this whole thing but they want to take the 911 calls and give it to civilians they want to take it completely out of the police department which has all already been done in denver successfully in, in other places around the country um you know so he's studying other models around the country uh, in Eugene, they have a program there where, you know, when there's a 911 call, uh, usually people show up unarmed. There's also uh, an effort here now to take all pretty much traffic uh, policing and, um, and and traffic and forced parking enforcement, taking that out of the police department and giving that to the Department of Transportation so the people that enforce it are unarmed, you know, and can also serve as, you know, liaisons with the community and try to work out problems with people instead of, you know, um, show up and, and escalate. So there are a lot of issues where I think the city council is moving ahead. It's a slower process, of course, than the protesters would like. So they continue to demonstrate they haven't gotten their 50 percent cut in the budget or anything close to that. Uh, Carmen Best, the police chief, did resign. So that was one of the demands. Mayor Jenny Durkin, even though there's a recall uh, campaign against her, she's sticking in there. And the alternative Socialist Party member Shama Sawan also has a recall campaign against her so you're getting it from both sides here in seattle right now 
it's a big shakeup in local politics because of the Black Lives Matters movement. And by the way, Jeff, the big news, I think, over the last week is that uh, Crosscut, which is a local website news magazine here in Seattle, which I've written for, they did a poll and they found that the majority of people in Martin Luther King Jr. County and in Seattle, where it's located, are in support of the Black Lives Matters movement. So the right wingers and the you know certain spokespeople for the police guild and think, you know who are really anti BLM, they're kind of barking up the wrong tree because in, the majority of people in this part of the country support the Black Lives Matters movement. They support the protests and they believe that the, some of the violence that's being caused is actually not a part of the original movement, but is being caused by you know instigators and infiltrators. So. Uh, that's the that's the majority opinion in this part of the country right well, let me, now. Let me ask that's you, really Mark. Important. Yeah, I think it's really important to, to hear. How much has there been any documentation by by uh, your your friends and, and your organization, Democracy Watch News, and others that you know whether it's Trump people, whether it's uh, the Proud Boys or uh, Boogaloo or any of these folks that have been seen, you know, orchestrating uh, and creating more chaos, and then of course blaming it on the BLM. Well, you know, first of all, 19,000 uh, communications with the Office of Police Accountability over complaints against police officers during demonstrations in the last few months. 19,000. Wow. Now, in my mind, the mayor should resign just because of that. But no, right. she's going to stand by the police department. 19,000 complaints. Hey, no problem. <laughs> yeah, it is a problem. It will continue yeah. to be a problem regardless of how she tries to, you know, pull the wool over people's eyes. Also, so here's the process is you go to the Office of Police Accountability and you file your complaints. Now, the, both the uh, city's own uh, internal uh, accounting office, auditing office, and also the, the inspector for the city and the uh, civilian police review board are so behind in trying to process these complaints that we don't even know a lot of what's been happening yet. Um, so they need more staffing, obviously, probably more, more funding themselves. Uh, yeah, take a little bit from the police department where one officer made over $400,000 last year, uh, partly because of uh, they were working without a contract for a while, so some of that was back pay. But the average officer makes like $150,000, or average employee of the Seattle Police Department makes $153,000 a year. So, you know, there might be some cutting that can go on there and then fund these civilian organizations. Uh, as far as uh, the news reporting, there hasn't been as much actually reporting about what you were talking about here in Seattle as there has been in Portland for some reason. I'm not sure why, but Seattle kind of has its own thing. Seattle has roving bands of people who break windows sometimes, but I think that's almost a tradition here that goes way back. You know, all the May Day pro, you know, riots and things like that where the police you know, we're unleashing the tear gas and the concussion grenades. That would happen then, too. So occasionally there are marches in Seattle where there's some property damage. But I think generally people are saying, you know, well, that's not good. It's bad for business. It's usually large corporate businesses that get it. And then otherwise, you know, people are saying, well, they're not harming people. So I guess people see a difference there. Now, obviously, people like Donald Trump do not. They see, you know, property damage as, you know, this as on a maybe a higher level of crime sometimes than um, violence against people. But in general, yeah, there hasn't been a lot of violence amongst people or against people in Seattle. It's been uh, property damage. And there was the construction site for the new youth detention uh, center was burned a couple months ago, remember? And some of that footage that I got of that ended up on you know national media. So I've seen the craziness that goes on here. But in general, um, I think it's been a, a, a little bit safer lately now. We have um, uh, Police Chief Diaz now. Aaron Diaz is the new police chief, and he's taken sort of, you know, the same kind of stance in terms of like, oh, we're going to, you know, deal with these protesters and arrest a lot of people. But they're dealing with smaller numbers at, at a time. So not as much tear gas and pepper spray and concussion grenades and things like that lately. But we'll, we'll see. You never know with the Seattle Police Department. They're always willing to unleash that stuff if they think that, you know, somebody threw a bottle or something. So... Well, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm glad that uh, you know there's there's some elements here of reform, but it, it, it's not surprising. Um, before we get to the, the Seahawks thing, I want to I want to ask you a little bit: um, Are are there people who are looking, um, you know, to see if whether or not Mari um, and uh, and your fellow other senator there um, are are going to actually 
you know, become more progressive. We talk about what happened here with Ed Markey, who moved to the left uh, unbelievably um, and, um, you know, ended up beating Joe Kennedy. Um, you know, defeating a Kennedy in Massachusetts is unheard of. Um, is there any hope, uh, you know, that uh, that either senator – uh, is going to move further to the left. I mean, Patty Murray was supposedly the woman in tennis shoes or whatever the heck it was, you know, 30 years ago. Um, what are you hearing? You know, I what I've seen is a Democratic Party, you know, unifying and trying to come together against Trump. And so uh, Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell Can't are, you. you know, in the same on the same bandwagon as Pramila Jayapal and some of the more progressive members of the Democratic Party. So right now, I think they're all trying to unify, and nobody's talking about, you know, challenging the incumbents. But we'll see. I mean, in general, the trend here for quite a while has been more and more towards a more progressive or even democratic socialist sort of agenda. And we're seeing that on the city council, um, where, you know, funding, subsidizing local businesses, um, funding the arts and education. Even the mayor decided to set aside $95 million dollars for uh, local schools. I mean, that kind of thing, that more FDR style, let's, you know, invest in the infrastructure and invest in our institutions and educational institutions and art institutions. I think that kind of thing is, is looking more promising now than maybe it was during the big payday of the Amazon and Google takeover here where they didn't even want to pay taxes, let alone, you know, fund the arts. So, yeah, I think, you know, in general, Chama Sawant, this is my prediction. Uh, I hope people don't hold me to it if I'm wrong, but you never know. Uh, I think Chama Sawant will survive the recall challenge. I think she has a lot of support in the community among small businesses and labor and socialist organizations and other groups who um, just feel kind of alienated by the, the general um, political status quo here. So, you know, she'll always have that crowd to draw on, I think. I mean, Seattle. Would she run main, from there? You know, I think this, this is my analysis and commentary. I think that she right now sees herself as more effective as a city council member because she has uh, seven other cohorts and, you know, um, comrades, so to speak, to work with. They are all trying to move towards a more progressive direction and re envisioning what a police department should be and how public services should be and how to address homelessness. That's the other issue, Jeff. You know, the, the economic downturn has been really hard. It was already hard when the rent skyrocketed in Seattle and there's no rent control, right? Because all these million dollar, billion dollar uh, developments here from major corporations or their headquarters. But now, because of the pandemic and the, a lot of businesses closing down, you have even more unemployment, you have even more homelessness, and now we see even more people in the parks. And Denny Park, which is the oldest park in Seattle, uh, not far from the Space Needle, is full of tents right now. And Andrew Lewis said, you know what, whenever we go in and we sweep people, they just come back. If we don't offer them some kind of subsidized or, you know, affordable or free housing, some way to get them up the street, it's not going to solve the problem to send in the police department. So the navigation team, which is what that group in the Seattle Police Department has been called, has also had major cuts to its staff. He just said, we don't want to use the police anymore to try to deal with homelessness. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's not a crime to be poor. Please give me a break. No, I I I, uh, I, I think that that uh, that awareness is there. Um, I hope she runs, and I hope she, uh, um, you know, can become mayor. I mean, can you serve? You can't serve both on uh, like a parliamentary situation, both as a city councilor and a mayor. That's uh, you have to have one or the other. Is that right? The way the law works there. The office of the mayor is separate from the city council in Seattle, unlike some other assemblies and. Um, city governments. The mayor is an executive branch, like the the presidency. Right, right. On the floor. So she can veto city council votes. They can overturn her veto, though, much like Congress or Parliament. So, you know, she is fighting them, but she lost this last battle, and that tells me that the these kind of, this kind of progressive politics of you know really highlighting on human rights and civil rights and you know feeding people and, and clothing and and giving people homes. That's like what Seattle should be about. We've, we've always had a big heart when it comes to volunteer organizations. I know a lot of organizations that give out free food every Sunday. In fact, Op and I play music at one of them, which takes place in a park in Seattle. And so there are all sorts of groups that give out free food here. There's tons of food banks, uh, even you know Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, uh, the PCC co-ops, they all 
donate food to these well, programs. Well, let me ask you this. Are there more people from your in your naked eye, and if you have any numbers, please uh, give us those too, that, you know, in comparison to, say, six months ago uh, or eight months ago pre-pandemic, are there more people there in line for those foods? I Actually, in some cases, no, because people stopped going to food banks, Jeff, because they were afraid to wait in line. I you know see, what I'm saying? I see. Sure, it sure. Really yeah, no, I understand. Also. So the one group that I know of uh, that still is continuing, they have hand washing stations and they have very strict six foot rules and they, you know, have people with gloves prepare the food for you and stuff. So they're very careful about it. And in that case, people feel safe. And then when I perform, I stand, you know, like 100 feet away out in the middle of the grassy field. <laughs> and play my music, but I'm really I don't loud, blame you. so people can hear me. <laughs> yeah. But people can hear me all over the neighborhood, so it's kind of the neighborhood uh, concert once a week, as long as the weather is good. And, yeah, they keep telling me, Mark, you don't need a PA. Your voice is so loud. I'm like, I know. There but that's go. rock. you got to be loud. you know? you got to be loud. Ann yeah, Wilson, yeah. right? There you go. Hey, by the it, way, I saw Ann Wilson on her yacht down here on the waterfront. She was having a good time with her friends, and I couldn't see the name of the yacht, but I kept thinking it was probably called, like, The Little Queen or something like that, or Dreamboat Annie, maybe. <laughs> That's one of those songs. Well, you know, uh, speaking of the entertainment Oh, and go world, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I, I want to get to that because, you know, of course, Pete Carroll is doing some ads on some of the NFL Network and a few other places where he's, uh, you know, talking about he only needs, he only needs to win 60% of the time, and that's the the effort to get out the vote that only 60% of uh, of us vote. And, um, you know, uh, they have been uh, playing fabulous football. Uh, does the – I call it the pink hat world – uh, because, you know, nobody goes to the games now because of the pandemic. But um, are they – is it one of these scenarios where they are so red hot that the entire uh, city now is sort of, you know, Seahawk crazy um, uh, because of the fact that they are doing a lot of the progressive, you know, ideas, um, you know, in terms of race relations, in terms of BLM? Um, what's that scene like? <laughs> Wow, oh, that's a big question. That, that's you know we could cover that at late night for a long time. Like <laughs> we will, we will. The NBA, the NFL, the NLB—they've uh, all been, and and you know eventually hockey. But yeah, they, you're cracking. And oh, by the way, we have a rugby team besides a hockey team. Besides the cracking, <laughs> we also have a rugby team. So we okay. can talk about that more in the future. Right. But the rugby um, players here are very serious about being involved in the community. Um, same thing with the Seahawks. A lot of the Seahawks players, and yeah, everybody loves Russell Wilson. I mean, look, that's the only jersey I would probably wear, Jeff, because I'm not, you know, I'm not a logo wearing kind of guy. I like to buy vintage clothes, and I'm, I'm wearing a 1940s style fedora today that got blown off by the wind a few minutes ago. But, you know, <laughs> I would wear the only jersey I'd probably wear Get would be uh, a Russell Wilson because of my song, The Legion of Boom, you know, Russell Wilson's a new kid in town. He can. He can run it. He can score for another touchdown. The smartest athlete in the NFL. He's icy cool, so he cannot fail. That's Russell wow. Wilson, man. The guy never loses his cool. Win, lose, draw. He's the same guy. He's like, yep, we're going back out and doing it again. <laughs> you never see him. <laughs> you notice that? Now, other players, even the Paytons, you know, I, I have to admit, occasionally, like, get mad and throw their helmet or kick a barrel of Gatorade or something. But you never see Russell Wilson doing that because he's a very level-headed guy. He sees everything in the long term, and so does Pete Carroll. That's why they get along so well. And just to see the love on that team. Now, a lot of players on the team do do a lot of community service, and they, the Seahawks have donated a bunch of money um, to try to help house some of the most difficult cases when it comes to homelessness, like people who are, have mental illness and other physical yeah. difficulties. It makes it really well, Carroll difficult. Carroll did that when he was USC system. coach in, in L.A., too. Um, fantastic stuff. Hey, enjoy the water, man. I know you're, you're out there. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's crazy weather. Sometimes it's 55, sometimes it's 75 there in Seattle. I know we got inclement weather as we speak here today. Uh, but we will look forward to trying to get you, uh, on at night too, man, in the, in, in the coming weeks, dude, because I know you're, uh, you know, you know, you know you're a night owl on, on top of it all. Uh, so are you going to be playing any music today? Or are you just, uh, sort of, um, you know, vegging out on a Tuesday well, afternoon? A car that I've ordered that has the built-in amp. Okay. So I don't need to have an right. that you want to play. If FedEx lost it or something, it left Hackensack, New Jersey, like over a month ago and disappeared right. off the earth. So, no, hey, Mark, I'm take care of yourself. Uh, we will talk to you yeah. next Tuesday.
Don't back down, man. I know you won't. I want to thank Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. We'll be back at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, live, our debut in Madison. Check us out, folks. Until then, my name is Jeff Santos, and I got to go. This is the Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. Rebuilding America together.